Welcome all you Geminis to your solstice reading and this is for June 21st up to September 22nd when we have the equinox and of course for those of us in the northern hemisphere we're moving into the summer solstice and for those of us in the southern hemisphere we're moving into the winter solstice now i'm going to be using a different type of reading this time around and i'm going to start off with these energy oracle cards and fyi any of the cards that i use during a reading i do list in the description box below but we're going to see what energy that you're entering the solstice with so we'll start off there let me just give these a shuffle All right, so for our Geminis, what energy do you want them to know about that they're going in with in the solstice? Nope, they said none of those. All right, they do want that one right there. And you have contract number six. And so we will put that right here and let's see what energy comes with this for you. And we, of course, will dig in deeper. So this card shows a contract in the background ready to be signed, indicating a committed connection of some sort. So this union may be a business deal, the sale of a home, a new job, or even a commitment in marriage. Whatever the connection is, this card is more than just a casual agreement. It's usually something that requires a document that's binding, at least for the time being. So the scales of justice also indicate that if a legal action is underway, it's likely to turn out in your favor. So this card shines a light on potential new opportunities. So remain aware and receptive to what what may be coming your way. So you are entering the solstice period with this feeling, I want to say of obligation, but it's a feeling of commitment. It is a feeling of, and, and like I it said, it's, it's next level commitment. It's uh, moving into this area where you really have made a decision to put your energy into something. So I love that for you. We're also going to use these Tarot of Dreams. I'm just give them a quick shuffle and then I'll tell you what each of the piles is. I pull cards for them one more time. All right, so we're going to first pull a couple cards here. Like from the past, what is what has brought you into this point of, of how you're entering the solstice? So we'll pull a couple cards for this. Okay, they do want that one. What else for a Gemini? Okay, they want that one there. Okay. And then on your current course, this is where you end up throughout the solstice. Like what's the, what, how is this gonna end up? This is kind of like a little feature prediction. So for, future here okay they do have three for that and then we're going to ask spirit what advice or what do they want you to know about this solstice adventure so we'll pull a couple cards for there there's a lot of energy in these cards <laughs> they definitely want to fly here so you do have three up here and then this is going to be messages from your shadow. Now your shadow is like your tour guide here on Earth. It's a piece of yourself. It's like your subconscious. It's your kind of connection to your higher self. And because they're the tour guide, they understand what's going on behind the scenes and below the surface. So this is just whatever information your uh, shadow would like you to know. Okay, there's one. <laughs> They do want to that one here and that one. So they do also have three for you down there. All right. So let's dive in here and we'll start over here first. And you've got the Palace of Cups. Now cups are your emotions and palaces are unique to this card deck. Uh, I look at them as a safe place to uh, become aware of and delve into and experience. So this is like your emotions. You can see how this city is way below the surface of the ocean. So all the turbulence that's going on top, any storms that are happening up there, you don't feel them down here. This is a safe place for you to feel your emotions. So I love that. And then you also have the emperor. Yeah, it makes sense here. 
the emperor of course is about stability it's about organization taking control and so you definitely coming up to this point have really created a space that you feel comfortable feeling your emotion looking into your emotions you know this emperor here shows kind of the logical side almost too that you have gone through it's almost like this uh very uh i don't want to say rigid but it's a very organized and complex uh, way of looking at your emotions like okay I'm gonna create this safe space and then I'm gonna look at this emotion and then I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do this and you've kind of stepped through that through you know a few months even years for some of you uh, have been doing that to get you up to this place where you feel that you're ready to make this commitment whatever it may be a commitment to others or a commitment to yourself uh, for some of you this is like these emotions that you have felt that you haven't been worthy to want things for yourself, to do things for yourself, always self-sacrificing. But here comes those balancing where you're realizing that I can take time for me too. I'm allowed that. <laughs> and so uh, that's for a large portion of you. And others, it is that you have been hurt in the past and you've really worked through your emotions and your understanding of why you have those insecurities, of why, you know, uh, you have this hesitancy to let people be on the walls. And you've really had this safe space where you've uh, created this. Uh, confidence this created this understanding of yourself to allow yourself to make these commitments in different areas of your life and taking those to next levels we'll also look here and see based on your current trajectory of going through the solstice what does that bring for you what does this end up being and you have the seven of cups which is great because here you go you have all the cups all the emotions and the seven of cups can be confusion around emotions but i really feel for you because of everything that we just talked about this is about you being able to see and i'm sorry this is the eight of cups but the seven of cups would have been that you have this ability to choose what emotion you want to feel you've really gained control and understanding that you get to choose what emotion you experience in any situation so no one can hurt you unless you want to be hurt and so i love that energy coming in here because this eight of cups is that you're leaving behind those emotions that no longer served you so that makes total sense with this too because you have this power and this understanding of the seven of cups right before this one taking you into this eight of cups where you're like yes I no longer need to hold on to that emotion. I have tons of choices and those have served me. I have learned through them, but I'm done with them. I'm ready for something new. Eights are like next level, so you're ready for next level emotions. Then you have the tree of life, and this is beautiful because this is your higher self up here, and here's the ladder, the journey that you've taken to come down to be a human. So this is like your higher self at a vibration of unconditional love energy, and here you are at a low vibration of love, which is the uh, conditional love of the external world. So you are on this path, you're ready, and I love this with this Eight of Cups when I said you're ready to go to the next level ready to step up and go on another ring up to finding and returning back to your higher self and the awareness of yourself. So very powerful uh, energy there. Let's move these over a little bit. And then you have the three of cups. Yep, celebration. So a lot of emotion that's coming in here for you, which I know, Gemini, you're an air sign. You usually are in your head a lot, but that's where this very organized way of looking at your emotions came into play which allows you to feel this joy this pure joy of who you really are at your highest point here because our natural state is unconditional love joy laughter and peace and that is what you're being able to connect with as you've gone through this journey so far let's take a look here and see what spirit has to say for you too Yep, King of Wands. Wands is your energy. It's your drive, ambition, inspiration, your passion. The King of Wands is the highest energy you can feel, which would be your higher self, the spirit world. And so this really is this message for you that you are uh, 
able to connect and this energy that you're moving into through the solstice that you can use that to connect higher and higher in fact the three of cups has a special meaning for me um, which i wasn't going to mention but now with this they're like yes mention that <laughs> uh, that represents our higher posse of support all those guardian angel and angels and spirit guides loved ones on the other side our ancestors the creator spirit all these myriad of beings of uh, unconditional love and light that they are with you and around you and this is definitely this nudge to connect they're there just ask we're here we're here so i love that and then you have the king of coins too so king of pentacles uh, in a standard tarot and the king of coins is so wise he deals with so much in the outside world and in about his worth uh, in his search for worth through all of the all of the coins all of the pentacles because he's at the very end so whereas the king of wands was the highest you know uh, energy you can feel this is the highest um, abundant feeling that you can feel this worth feeling this worthiness feeling that you can have and he learns that through his journey with all of the other you know coins cards that he's lived through to get up to this point and one of the big pieces of wisdom that he has is kind of about this worth right because he searched for his worth in external things in three areas really relationships situations like jobs education social status and things like our bodies our possessions our bank accounts and when he looked into all these three areas and he was defining his worth on them he felt very unstable and worth less because those things are unstable in the external world relationships that involves people and people change or they pass away so that's unstable situations never stay the same they are unstable and of course our bodies and our possessions and money all those things break down deteriorate are stolen or burned down so those things are unstable so as he looked outside of himself he kept on being turned back inward to where he eventually found this beautiful place of love and emotion and his worth from within because he connected to his higher self he connected to this realm where there is this unconditional love that they have for us no conditions it only takes one condition to make unconditional love conditional so no conditions and that became his solid foundation of his worth and what else do we have here yep and then you have the eight of swords so you had the eight of cups moving to a new level of emotion, eight of swords, moving to a new level of your thoughts and beliefs. Because you realize with this card that it was your own thoughts and beliefs about yourself that was keeping you limited and constricted and bound and blinded. So through these experiences here, you have been looking at your um, whys, you know, the W-H-Y-S. Why do I feel this way? And you question it. I believe this about me. Why? I believe this about them. Why? And so you've been really digging into these beliefs and seeing where they've been coming from. So there is this release that comes from that. Now let's take a look here and see what your shadow has to say. And you've got the page of cups. So cups are your emotions. So no kidding. You've had cups all over the place in here. <laughs> uh, so this is not a surprise, but pages are these messengers. So you have messages of love coming to you, which is obvious. We have, you know, your higher self in the spiritual world just saying, here's a new level of love you're headed up to. This is this eight of cups to new level. So you're ready to experience a higher love than you've ever experienced in your life before. And they're nudging you toward that. And they're saying, take the chance. You've been doing the work for it. It's safe to allow new emotion to come in. And then you have the four, oh yeah, the four of swords. Four of swords, I, I kind of look at it as the peace of mind card because here are the three swords of, the three of swords card, 
which is what I call the expectations card. Normally the three of swords would have a heart with all the three swords stuck in it. But here you can see they're sleeping on the ace of swords. And what this means, the three of swords with expectations were those three areas I talked to you about that we deal with emotionally too. Because our thoughts are focused on relationships, situations, and things in our bodies. So it's always engaged in these things. And we have these beliefs, you know, that we talked about with this Eight of Swords. These beliefs that have been given to us, that we've been conditioned with since we were very young. That, that when this happens, this is what it means. When this happens, this is how you're supposed to feel. And so the Three of Swords always kicks in and it's pricking that heart because that's when fear kicks in because eventually, as I mentioned, they were all unstable things. Eventually they'll let us down and in that moment we'll have this fear kick in. That's the fight or flight kicking in that we feel we're unlovable, unacceptable, we're in danger, I'm not good enough, you know, whatever it might be. It sparks and it pricks our heart and that's the feeling of going into panic mode, into fight or flight mode. I'm going to fight like crazy or run like crazy. But the Ace of Swords here is beautiful because the Ace of Swords basically gives us the power to one, connect to the capital T truths of a higher realm of unconditional love. We get to find out what the real truth is. It also allows us to cut away these thoughts and these beliefs, the small T truths that no longer serve us. So like the Eight of Cups, you're walking away from the emotions that no longer serve you. The Eight of Swords was cutting away those thoughts and those beliefs that no longer serve you. And this is how we do it. This is how you get this peace of mind. You have this Four of Swords coming in. So I love the stability that's coming in and the balancing here, of course, with that Libra symbol. This is the balancing of those as well. And then you have Faith. Number five, which so this would normally be like the Hierophant. So you've got the Emperor and you have the Hierophant. The Hierophant is like the spiritual leader. The Emperor is the, uh, you know, like social, uh, societal leader. And both of them have this amazing energy around them. When you're talking about the balancing of two things, both of them have this story that are so tightly uh, compared in, in at least spirit. Uh, showed me because the emperor like the spiritual leader both have a loving side and both have a fear side when they're the, on the loving side they're a loving loved emperor a loving loved spiritual leader because they are not looking for their own you know uh power and control over others they are pouring out their heart and their uh resources and whatever else to their followers and to their kingdom to help them be successful and feel loved and to grow because they know when their kingdom and their followers are united in love they can impact the world in such amazing ways and you're like wow that is like ultimate stuff right but they also have a little child inside of them like we all do that little shadow side our little spirit, uh, not spirit self, but our little human self in there. And when it feels unsafe or out of control, it goes into that fight or flight mode we were talking about. It goes out of its mind because uh, our human body, when it gets triggered into that prick of the fight or flight mode, the blood starts rushing from our brain to our arms and to our legs for us to fight like heck or run like heck. And so we literally go out of our minds so that we're not standing there thinking, should I be fearing that giant saber-toothed tiger Rawr, and get eaten? It wants us just to react. And when we react in that way, we're reacting in fear. And we're usually not acting too intelligently as far as emotional intelligence and how we're treating others and, and all of that. So when that little child gets activated, it wants to feel safe again. It wants more control. It wants its control back. In fact, it wants everyone's control. I want to control everything. And so the little spiritual leader 
transforms from this loving spiritual leader to a cult leader instead that loving emperor transforms into this tyrant in you know barbarian instead of a loving emperor and so it's showing you that there's these two sides that we choose from on the scale there's two places every moment that you can choose from emotionally of fear of losing conditional love or unconditional love so beautiful we're also going to pull two cards from the Wisdom of the Oracle, and this is just going to be advice from Spirit on what can you do to help transform this energy throughout the solstice period. So what advice do you have for our Geminis, please? Okay, they want that one, and they want that one. So the first one you have is Flexible. <laughs> number 19 so put that one right here and then you also have message in a bottle number 15 so put that one right here and we'll read from the book on here and see what energy and advice they give you so we'll start with flexible and it says a tree's roots are solidly planted in the ground yet its branches can bend in a hurricane whereas a rigid structure like a building would come crashing down consider how the tree remains supple and secure when everything around it may be in shambles this is how you can be now willing to learn new things teachable, malleable, yet firmly grounded in who you are. Common sense is important, but so is an open mind. Stay curious, stay open, stay aware. At this time, others will be more flexible with you too. So that's beautiful, especially we talked about the confidence of who you are coming into this. So staying flexible and bending with the wind, bend like a reed in the wind, right? That will help you through this process. And then message in the bottle, it says, Spirit sends you signs when you ask for them. When you believe you will receive them, and when you allow yourself to become fluent in the language of symbols, oracles, and omens. So that makes total sense with all the spiritual contact we had here too. Be open to seeing the messages from them throughout that period. And you can do that when we're in the chaotic world of fear, like we were talking about, it's very loud, very noisy, and we can't hear the whispers of love. But the frequency at which spirit speaks is one of unconditional love and joy and peace and laughter, you know, the natural state we talked about. So to connect to your higher realms, intentionally take time away and step out away and get into a quiet place and focus on that energy and that raises your vibration to a place that you can hear their messages and see their signs more clearly. So those messages may come to you as a bird flying by, a logo on a truck, or a song on the radio. Expect confirmation that you're pointed in the right direction. Keep your ears open for someone might say just the right thing that will give you the answer to your query. Today, your message is this. Spirit hears you, and the reply is favorable. <laughs> Love it. So definitely some great advice there. And then your final card is going to be from the Cosmic Journey. This basically is if you heed this advice and, and go on that uh, kind of trail, how will that impact or uh, your solstice period here? All right. What's your final message for our Geminis, please? All right, that one right there. And you've got, how can this be a wonderful win, win, win? <laughs> yes. So this can be a wonderful win, win, win. So that's what they're saying. How can it be? Heed this advice, be flexible, listen to spirit. Boom, right? Card number 16. And let's see what comes with this for you. In the situation that you're in, there's a solution that can truly help you, your community, our planet, your venture, everyone. Yet something holds you back. 
Do you even really need to be persuaded and influenced to do what's better for you in the world? Perhaps there is a deep-seated belief that you don't deserve. Do you, like the worth we were talking about, right? Do you worry that any act that benefits you must be selfish and thus an evil scheme? Know that there is a path that leads you to your win-win-win. Your evil scheme is one for the global good. <laughs> What's possible? Anything, if you can imagine it. Wow, very powerful message. And the cosmic catalyst question for you that you can consider throughout the solstice. What is my idea for an evil scheme for global good? I love it. They have a great sense of humor. And the little cosmic checkbox says, research at least 10 example businesses or projects already making the world a better place with their evil scheme. <laughs> so beautiful. I love this energy that's coming in and for you. You definitely have done this work to open yourself and get yourself ready for uh, emotionally for so much. And there is this beautiful journey that you're going to be going through the solstice that just really opens you up just remain this flexibility go with the flow let go of a lot of all these beliefs like we were talking about connect to spirit they are dying to talk to you they don't die of course they just laughed but it is a win-win-win so uh, definitely they are there for you you're not alone ask believe and you will get answers from them. So I love this for you. If you are looking for more messages of love from above, in addition to these readings, I also put out monthly readings for each zodiac sign, weekly energy updates for each zodiac sign, and a few other types of videos. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those messages and be notified immediately when they become available, if you give this video a little thumbs up and click the like button, also click the subscribe button and that gives you access to the notification bell. When you go in there, if you select the all option, then you'll be notified of any new videos that come out on the channel. Also doing those things help spread the love because when you like a video, when you share a video, when you comment on a video, or if you subscribe to the channel, especially the YouTube algorithm gets so excited and it wants to share the videos of that channel with other people as well. So if you feel inspired to do any of those things, I'm definitely grateful for for that. Also, these are general readings, and if you're looking for even more specific information for your specific life, I do offer personal readings, and all that information is listed in the description box below. All right, all you Geminis, as you go through this amazing solstice, please know that every second of every day of your life that you are unconditionally loved by the creator of all things, and of course, I love you too. Have an amazing solstice period. Uh, I'm sure I'll be talking to you in the very near future, though. So in the meantime, you hang in there and you take care.